Hey guys, so as I said in my previous video, I have just come back, or not just come back now, but a few weeks ago I came back from Eindhoven in the Netherlands, where I made a custom water cool PC for a friend of mine. Now, spec-wise it wasn't anything too amazing, it was made up mostly of parts that I had kind of lying around here, some of which you might have seen in my previous videos. So I had two objectives for this trip really, one was to actually learn how to water cool a PC, which I'd never done before, which I didn't actually tell my friend that, and two, to actually turn her into a fellow PC enthusiast because she she played a lot of PlayStation before and now she plays a lot of PC so get in it worked so this is sort of a summary video of what I did over there made up from all the little bits of footage I got I didn't actually get a lot of footage yeah, a lot less than I'd like and it's some of it's of questionable quality and certainly of rather questionable audio so <laughs> apologies in advance for that but I did at least want to make one video from it even if I couldn't make a full build log. So here we go, let me know in the comments what you think or what your first water cooling experience was like and uh, yeah, time for the voiceover. Okay so here are all our components laid out nice and neatly so let's go through them one by one. For the CPU we have got an AMD FX8320 as you can see right here. It's an unlocked processor, 8 core pretty good and I had it lying around so there we go. For the motherboard we've got the Asus Sabertooth 990FX Revision 2. It's like a good couple of years old now at least but it's still pretty good. Sports SLI, USB 3 and yeah it's a pretty good quality motherboard. For the graphics card we've got the Sapphire R9280X which you might recognize my first ever video. Uh, 3 gigs of RAM, it will easily hold its own nowadays at 1080p still. For the RAM we've got two 4GB sticks of Ballistic Sport VLP. It was low profile because that last system had a big heatsink. For the SSD we've got the OZZ ARC100 which we saw in my previous video. For the power supply we've got the Corsair TX750M, this is from my old system actually. Okay so now on to the water cooling parts. For the water block we have the EK Supreme LTX UNI CSQ 2013 version which we wanted particularly, there is an updated version but we wanted this one for the aesthetics reason. So we have the EK Coolstream PE240 radiator, nice thick radiator there. The pump and reservoir is EK DCP 2.2 X-Res. So look at it. we certainly wanted a reservoir that looked like that rather than one that comes into a five and a quarter inch bay. The fittings are 16 outer, 10 inner. So yeah, they're nice. For the coolant, we've got the EK E Coolant Evo UV Blue. And that can go with the Revolt Tech lighting, ultra bright cathode lights to make it all nice and pretty inside the case. Uh, for the case, we've got the NZXT H440 in black and blue. My friend thought it was very pretty, and I agree, so yeah, we went for that one. Right, okay, so let's start building. I have to say, I didn't get much or anything more than this on the first day, other than this, which is me first putting in the back plate and getting it all screwed down. And this is Ozzy. He's two years old and he's my little helper for this project. Okay, so this is the second day. I had to abandon it for the night because it got a bit dark. You can see we got there, got the water block in. It was a bit of a struggle with the plate. We managed to mount the reservoir to the side of the hard drive cages. I can just adjust the focus there, you see? With a nice little zip tie to hold it up off the graphics card. See, look, the tiniest little gap there. Got our new SSD in, 240 gigs. Very nice. Radiators in the top. I have had to put the fan into push, so it's pushing air from inside the case outwards, which isn't ideal. But seeing as it's got three intakes here and an exit here, it's going to work best that way. You don't want to be drawing in the hot air from outside into the case, because that would be bad for our graphics card right here. Okay, so we now have to measure the tubing, so I'll see you again in a bit. Anyway, as you can see, I've got the clear tubing in now. Just got one more to go in actually. Go right there on top. Had a bit of a nightmare. The uh, actual put the pipe over it, did up the outside. Wasn't sure so I undid it and it's taken out the entire thing. So just gotta separate that from the tubing and then we may continue. I see. Okay, so now it's time to fill it up. So what I'm doing here is I'm rocking the, rock, the power switch on and off, on and off, so it doesn't run 
for that long or hopefully at all without any coolant there because running pumps without any coolant or any water or indeed any oil depending what type of pump it is is a bad idea so I've put it on constantly now and we just fill it up it should have been only a couple of centimeters from the top she filled it up a little bit too far but it doesn't matter it did come out some air bubbles when we rocked it about so what we do now is leave it to leak test a little bit of a sit wrap here. This has been running now for 24 hours. I've just turned it off. There is no leaks at all, which is a very good sign. Though I did almost undo the reservoir by accident. So I might sit a little bit around it. Nice and tight now. Uh, ready to start plugging in all the cables, which should be nicely hidden down there. I am a bit disappointed by the power cable there. We might have to try and cover that up a little bit. And uh, we did find out we don't have a splitter for these. So I'm going to go out right now and buy one. Look at it all, it's a mess of cables around the back. And with this case there's foam insulation on the side so this will have to be really flat against the back. Otherwise the panel will kind of bow outwards and that wouldn't look very good. So yeah, that's how far we've got so far. Okay, we've got it all done. Now is the moment of truth. We're going to boot it up and we're going to see if it works. Let me look inside. Right. So, here we go. Will it work? Oh, is it? I bet you. I know what it is. Lock the switch is off. And I'll tell you, something happens every time. <laughs> first time. Okay, so let's see if it works. We have lights. Will it post? Come on. Come on. Yes! Yes! It lives! I didn't doubt it for a second. Right, okay, this is what we've got. The overclock is at 4.5, you see there. 1.3 volts, there or thereabouts. Our GPU is at its stock clock. It gets quite warm in this case, so the GPU temperature is 48 degrees at idle. And I know it's a bit high, but this case is very well insulated. It's got foam on it. It's only got those little slots at the top there, and the one down the side here for the intakes and exhaust, so that graphics card in there is going to get a little bit toasty. But let's see how well it can do. We're going to run a 3D Mark flash right? This is the 1080p version. Let's run, let's run it. Okay, so we have our result from Firestrike, it's 6984. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I have no idea if that's any good or not, but I included it anyway. Okay, so this benchmark has been running about five times now. So it's sitting at 72 degrees, the GPU. It hasn't throttled or anything like that. It's pretty toasty. Our CPU temperatures are still absolutely fine. So the highs are 49 degrees. That's pretty good. I would say under synthetic benchmarks, they do get up much higher, but in real world testing, we haven't managed to replicate anything close to that, so I'm calling that a win. Okay, and here is the finished product. Uh, obviously, it's a bit dark, so it's quite difficult to not make everything grainy. Otherwise, you can get the proper effect here. See, the UV lighting is looking pretty nice. Uh, I would say it does look a lot better in real life. It doesn't come across well in pictures or in video, but you get the idea. And overall, I think we've done a pretty good job of it. Okay, so here's the finished product in the light. I do apologize for shooting into a window. I know that was very stupid and you can't see anything. Uh, a few things that I really do want to improve on this system with, well, all my friends should improve. Uh, we did managed to cover up the wires on the power supply. We only put black tape around them though, which was a bit janky. 
Uh, my OCD really, really would like me to put another SSD next to it to make it nice and even and pretty, another ARC 100. Uh, we'd also like new memory, obviously, because that low-profile RAM was very much for having an air cooler. And I'm sure there's other things that we could do, like putting in another radiator for the graphics card, which would solve the problem of that being too hot. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching all this way. Sorry about the questionable quality in places. Uh, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Uh, don't forget to check out Torgar VPN if you enjoy being secure online, or maybe even Amazon through our affiliate code. Uh, yeah, thank you again for watching. Let me know anything in the comments below, what you think, etc. Like I said at the beginning, and I'll see you next time.